Mark Zuckerberg has gone absolutely scorched earth and poached the best research talent from Anthropic and mainly OpenAI. And now the full picture of Meta's super intelligence team has become clear. Zuck has announced in an internal memo what the super intelligence team is and who's going to be on it. And it is the who's who of AI researchers. Let me take a step back and explain how we got here. Just a few months ago, Llama 4 was released and it came in three sizes, small, medium, and large. The large one still hasn't come out. The other two landed, they were good, but good is not enough. For Meta to win the AI race, they need to have the best models on the planet. And at that time, whatever they were doing wasn't working. So Zuck put together a list of the top researchers in all of artificial intelligence. This was a secret list, a list that he crafted himself, and he aggressively went after all of them with insane offers. It was reported and later confirmed by Sam Altman himself. They started making these like giant offers to, uh, you know, a lot of people on our team, mm -hmm. um, you know, like $100 million signing bonuses. And this came right after Meta paid $14 billion to buy Scale AI. If you're not familiar with Scale AI, they've built a lot of infrastructure for data collection and labeling for large language models and other AI applications. But that's only a small piece of why Meta bought them. The real reason is because they have a phenomenal team led by Alexander Wang, a young prodigy who many people are calling the best CEO of this generation. For $14 billion, Meta got in exchange 49% of scale AI. Now you're probably wondering why didn't they just buy the company outright? Well, a couple reasons. The first reason, which is less applicable now, is regulatory and antitrust concerns. Now, with the Trump administration in place, that is actually much less of a concern for these major tech companies. But reason number two is far more likely, speed. They wanted to get the deal done quickly, and if they acquired the whole company, they were gonna have to go through a lot of reviews by different regulators, both in the US and internationally. So to just get the deal done, they took a minority stake in the company, but by doing so, it actually is going to kind of kill the company. Quickly after the deal was announced, OpenAI and Google canceled their contracts with Scale AI. Why would they want to give their data to their competitor, Meta? But it didn't matter. Zuck already got what he needed. He got all of the data that Scale AI comes with, and he got the team, more importantly. And he took the CEO, Alexander Wang, and moved him off of the Scale AI team to start the new super intelligence team at Meta. And then they got to work poaching people. When Sam Altman first made the announcement that Meta was aggressively going after their AI researchers with $100 million plus offers, he said, none of our best people have decided to take them up on that. But that's changed since. In the last few days alone, Meta has poached numerous top researchers, including their entire Zurich office, which included four of the best AI researchers who were either directly responsible or directly worked on ChatGPT, their reasoning model and so much more. According to the information, Meta has poached eight plus of OpenAI's top researchers. Alexander Wang, former CEO of ScaleAI, the new head of Meta's super intelligence team, announced it, saying, very excited to be working with, now hopefully I'm getting these names right, Shangjia Zhao, who was a research scientist at OpenAI, PhD at Stanford. Zhai Hui Yu, Perception at OpenAI, previously co-led Gemini Multimodal at DeepMind, Hongyu Ren, who is also a research scientist at OpenAI, a computer science PhD at Stanford, led the development of O3 Mini and O1 Mini, and Xu Chao Bi, who also was research at OpenAI, who was responsible for multimodal and reinforcement learning. So Alexander Wang says, very excited to be working with them towards super intelligence. Then just over the weekend, OpenAI finally responded. They realized they were having massive brain drain to Meta, and they are scrambling. Mark Chen, the chief scientist at OpenAI, sent an internal memo, which was more or less leaked, on Saturday, promising to go head-to-head -head on offers from OpenAI and, quote-unquote, recalibrating their compensation. Basically, they realized 
they need to pay up. These researchers are the best of the best and they're gonna get poached if they don't start paying much more than they are currently. And Mark Chen specifically said, someone has broken into our home. And that comes as OpenAI is taking this entire week off. What bad timing. And just today, capitalizing on them taking some time off, decided to announce the super intelligence team. Let me continue on what Chen said. I feel a visceral feeling right now as if someone has broken into our home and stolen something. Please trust that we haven't been sitting idly by. They need to rescue morale at the company. Chen promised that he was working with Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, and other leaders at the company around the clock to talk to those with offers, adding, we've been more proactive than ever before. We're recalibrating comp and we're scoping out creative ways to recognize and reward top talent. But they can't just pay unlimited funds. Meta's market cap is in the trillions. They have a ton of cash on hand and they can raise more pretty easily. OpenAI is still a private company and relative to Meta is kind of small. I mean, they're massive. They're the biggest private company in the world, I believe. But relative to Meta, still small. Chen said that he has a high personal standard of fairness and he wants to retain top talent. But while I'll fight to keep every one of you, I won't do so at the price of fairness to others. I don't think Zuckerberg is thinking that way. There is only one thing that matters in Zuck's mind super intelligence. And Meta is also using this week to pressure OpenAI staffers to make a decision quickly because OpenAI is off this week and Mark Chen specifically called that out. If they pressure you or make ridiculous exploding offers, just tell them to back off. It's not nice to pressure people in potentially the most important decision. Meta knows we're taking this week to recharge and will take advantage of it to try and pressure you to make decisions fast and in isolation. If you're feeling that pressure, don't be afraid to reach out. I and Mark are around and want to support you, said another leader at OpenAI. Mark Mark Chen also acknowledged that the company has been too focused on these incremental buzzy releases every few months that OpenAI has kind of been known for over the last year or two. And it worked really well. But there is only one goal, as I said earlier, it is super intelligence. We need to remain focused on the real prize of finding ways to compute. A lot more supercomputers are coming online later this year into intelligence, compute into intelligence. This is the main quest, and it's important to remember that skirmishes with Meta are the side quest. And now we come to the final part of this story. Mark Zuckerberg has introduced the super intelligence team internally, and of course it already leaked. Mark Zuckerberg notified Meta staff today to introduce them to the new super intelligence team. The memo, which Wired obtained, lists names and bios for the recently hired employees, many of whom came from rival AI firms like OpenAI, Anthropic, and Google. Here's Mark Zuckerberg from the memo. We're going to call our overall organization Meta Super Intelligence Labs, MSL. This includes all of our foundations, product, and fair teams, as well as a new lab focused on developing the next generation of our models, Zuckerberg wrote in a memo. And by the way, what happens to Jan LeCun? Maybe he's on a different team, but certainly has been deprioritized for the MSL team. Alexander Wang has been introduced as the chief AI officer and leader of MSL and as I had talked about in a previous video, GitHub CEO Nat Friedman is working with him. Friedman will co-lead the new lab with Wang with a focus on AI products and applied research. Here are the people they have been able to poach. Listen to this list. Trapit Bonsal, pioneered reinforcement learning on chain of thought and co-creator of O series of models at OpenAI. Massive. Reinforcement learning, a specifically chain of thought, reasoning models, was one of the biggest innovations of the last 18 months in AI, and he co-led it. And of course, OpenAI was the first to reach it. Don't forget that. OpenAI was actually first to reach a lot of these AI milestones as compared to their competition. Xu Chao Bai, co-creator of GPT-40 Voice Mode and O4 Mini. He previously led multimodal post training at OpenAI. Hu Wen Chang, co-creator of GPT-40's image generation. Ji Lin helped build O3, O4 Mini, GPT-40, 41, 
1-4-5-4-0 image gen and operator reasoning stack. This is insane. Joel Pobar, inference at Anthropic. Jack Ray, pre-training tech lead for Gemini and reasoning for Gemini 2.5. Hong Yu Ren, co-creator of GPT-4-0, 4.0 Mini, 0-1 Mini, 0-3 Mini, 0-3 and 0-4 Mini. Johan Schalkwick, former Google fellow, early contributor to Sesame and technical lead for Maya. Hey Sun, post-training, coding and reasoning for Gemini at Google DeepMind. Jaihu Yu, co-creator of 0-3, 0-4 Mini, 4-1, and Shangjia Zhao, co-creator of ChatGPT, GPT-4, all mini models, 4.1 and 03, and previously led synthetic data at OpenAI. This is an all-star team of AI researchers working around the clock with one goal in mind, super intelligence. And by the way, if you wanna get the most out of the models that I just mentioned, you need to check out Humanity's Last Prompt Engineering Guide created by myself and my team. Check it out, links down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.